I'm Tom Allen, and I'm talking about a study that we did of a biotechnology cluster of biotechnology companies in the Boston, Cambridge area, mm -hmm. testing the basic hypothesis of whether clustering new startup high technology companies together geographically has any benefits or not. There's been some discussion of this in the past. And so what we did is we, we defined an experimental group first of companies that were located in the uh, region behind MIT or Harvard Medical School on the Boston side of uh, the Charles River. And uh, we defined it by, by postal codes. We said if they, live in, if they happen to be uh, in one or more zip codes, then they were in our experimental group. If not, they were in our control group which included companies within 100 kilometers of, uh, of where the uh, experimental group is located. We went as far as Worcester, Massachusetts. Um, and we made comparisons between the two of them. Now what we had is, and you've got some of the data already, uh, you know, some of the technique we've got. We set up a web page that listed all of the companies that were doing biotechnology research in the region. And we pulled a sample of 50 companies that we're going to be, uh, that we're going to gather data from. And the way we do it is we, we set up the web page first, it lists the 200 or so companies, and then on randomly chosen days, we send emails out to scientists in the 50 companies that we're, that we're studying. And we ask them to think about what they did on that given day. And if they talk to anybody in any of these other companies about a scientific subject, not business deals, but scientific subjects, then just take their mouse and click that company. It goes into our database. We collect that because we, we do this repeatedly over a period of six months or so. In fact, six months was the time we, we did it. Every week on a different day for six months. Then we plot out a network from the data that we have. We know which companies have had some contact with one another. Uh, and that includes, by the way, five major broad-based pharmaceutical companies uh, uh, that located in the area. Merck, Pfizer, Wyeth, uh, AstraZeneca, and Novartis uh, are located here. And we, and we sample scientists in those, those companies as well. There are also a number of large well-established uh, biotechnology companies, uh, Biogen, Genzyme, and so forth. There are uh, five or six companies of that sort. And we sampled from them as well. So we had a pretty complete network of, uh, of companies because even those that we weren't studying directly, we got references to because somebody said they talked to somebody in a company that didn't happen to be one of the ones who were sampling. We assumed that that meant there was communication between those two companies. Well, once you have data like that, you can begin to ask a lot of questions about it. Uh, for example, one of the basic questions was, is there higher communication within the geographic cluster, within those zip codes, than there is with companies outside? And the answer is yes. If you apply some uh, simple graph theory uh, measures to it, you find that the companies within the, within the, uh, the geographic cluster uh, are more central to the network than are, are other companies. Then you can ask things about the role of the universities and the role of the major pharmaceutical companies and so forth. And you find, of course, that the universities are a major factor because that's where most of those companies have their origins. Uh, so that there are, there are actually five universities nearby that are doing uh, biotechnology research. But the, most of the work, that the, most of the companies had their origins in either Harvard Medical School or MIT. Uh, but Boston University is very active. A lot of companies came out of Boston University. Northeastern University is less active. Tufts a little bit through their medical school and so forth. But one of the key things that came out was the role of those major pharmaceutical companies. Everybody was connected into them. Largely, I think, although I can't, we can't really test that, uh, because they were active in going out and trying to uh, make contact with the smaller companies. They were, they were all obviously trying to expand into biotechnology. And there's a lot of technology available in these small companies, so they were looking for license opportunities or acquisition opportunities, and they, uh, they were working hard at it. But they become a major factor in, in, in the network. 
and I think that it really helps the network to, uh, to develop as a result of their position. Uh, we also found the communication was much higher, as I think I said already, uh, within the geographic really defined cluster area than the, the companies that were farther out. But we, we tested it still another way to see whether there was uh, uh, any effect from physical proximity. Uh, we obtained the latitude and longitude of each of the companies in the sample. Now that obviously is the location of the front door, but most of these companies are pretty small, so the, the error there isn't very great. There's a bigger error in that we, we measured distance between the companies, but we did it as the crow flies. We weren't able to really measure going around uh, uh, corners and so forth. It can be done, but we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, get into that level of detail. But we then were able to compute for each company the average distance that company was from all the other companies in our study. So now that's a characteristic of a company. What's their mean distance from all the other companies that are in the study? And we related that to uh, the level of communication among that, that same set of companies. How much did that focus company, company that, that we're looking at, how much did, they, did that company, did the scientists in that company, communicate with all the other companies? And so now you've got two measures for each company. Uh, their average distance and their level of communication with those other companies. And when you relate those two, you find a sudden drop within a few kilometers. Uh, it's just about zero. It's very high in close and drops off very rapidly with distance, showing that uh, broadband communication isn't really substituting for face-to-face. -face. These people are talking to one another, one another face-to-face. That's how distance impacts uh, uh, the, the likelihood of communication between companies. Some of that, I think, is due to the fact that these companies are generally pretty small. As a result, they don't have any dining facilities. People go outside the company for lunch, and they go to the lunch rooms and cafes and so forth around Kendall Square, uh, an area which is a neighborhood in Cambridge, where most of them are located. And they run into old friends that they knew from their university days, and they talk to one another. Or they ride in on the same subway train, or they run into each other in the same parking lot, or whatever it may be. It's a, it, I believe, is a function of small size companies that uh, people get out and bump into one another much more frequently. And it's a very interesting phenomenon that way. Uh, and so as a result, a lot of knowledge was, was transferred. Uh, we also found people, of course, move between companies uh, when they're so close together, and that promotes communication. Interesting uh, little instance that we ran across was one of the companies that we were studying uh, uh, were very optimistic about their growth for a few years. They were doing very well, but they're a little bit too optimistic and overhired. They ended up with more staff than they than the business really uh, could carry, and they had a fairly substantial layoff. Uh, now these scientists who were laid off, interestingly enough, didn't go away mad. It turned out that they brought business back to the company that had fired them, <laughs> and really built a network. Helped that that company built its network with the companies that they were now working in. They spread out, picked up jobs all over the area. Uh, so you see things like that going on here that are very interesting. Now what else do we learn from it? Well, one is, I think, the importance of the, the major pharmaceutical companies being here. We all know that uh, the universities are important and uh, in different regions where they've tried to develop high technology clusters of this sort. Of course, it has to be built around a major university. I think that's true. I think that our data certainly support that. Uh, but the other part of it is that the, uh, the large companies, both the large biotechnology companies, by the way, and the uh, traditional pharmaceutical companies, seem to play a significant role. We need to know more about that, just how it works and so forth. But uh, when we look at the networks, they have central positions in the networks. And I think they're critical to, to, to uh, developing the network and developing the communication and making these clusters effective and making these clusters